This is Witchspace News for Friday the 22nd of April 2022 ...I'm Commander Burr. In Elite Dangerous news this week we've a summary of the latest news out of Frontier there's some very intriguing Elite Dangerous concept art Salvation continues to manoeuvre the chessboard as the Thargoids step up their presence inside the bubble and more. To make sure you don't miss any of our videos hit like and subscribe and remember to click the little bell icon and select all notifications and if you'd like to help directly support this channel you can also join our Patreon via the link in the video description. Video of a now completed 3D printed scale model of a Victory class fleet carrier was posted by its creator Commander Jaguarius this week. The carrier is 1 3000th scale and comes out at a metre in length with 250 metres of fibre optic cabling within its significant bulk running its illuminations and if that wasn't enough it also comes complete with sound effects. Suffice to say it's a significant piece of work and in the video which is linked in the description below Jaguarius also shows some images of the build process and how he got to the final product. We've seen some seriously impressive 3D printed ships come out of this community. This fleet carrier has, surely, to be the current king. Do check it out, it's quite a thing. Just a quick warning this next article contains details and images that could be considered spoilers for future content so if you're sensitive to that kind of thing then please consider this fair warning. You'll find a link in the description below that will take you to the other chapters in this video if you want to skip round it. Still with us? Here we go then. My thanks to John327 for sending along some concept art created for Elite Dangerous that they dug up on Artstation.com. The concept art by Mark Montague shows a large transporter vehicle styled somewhat after a futuristic articulated lorry. This obviously isn't something we've seen anything even close to in the game yet and we've honestly no reason to believe that anything like this will be making an appearance in Elite Dangerous at any point. What makes it interesting however is that this particular image was posted to the site just 2 weeks ago and that it perhaps gives a degree of insight into where Frontiers mind might be going or where it might have been going with the game at one point. It would be hard to envisage a vehicle of this size and type traversing a terrain of the type seen in the Horizons era without a deliberate roadway being created. It was far too mountainous and extreme. Odyssey terrain however does regularly feature large flat plains and desert like expanses often bordered by mountains and hills. The type of terrain in fact that an all terrain vehicle of this size could likely easily deal with. Whether Frontier envisioned this vehicle being a static piece of set dressing at an installation or an NPC driven or perhaps even player driven asset we may never know but it's an intriguing oddity nevertheless. If you've never trawled through Artstation it's worth a look periodically. There are a few fair pieces of work on the site created by the amazing artists that work or have worked on Elite over the years. While researching this piece for the show we found examples of textures and materials that were created for Odyssey, 3D models of some of the ARC's store outfits that now feature in the game and even what we believe is probably some early concept work for on foot Thargoids or Guardians. I've linked below to just some of the texture and concept work that we've discovered on Artstation as well as the ATV hauler vehicle that John327 highlighted if you want to take a look at any of it. In Frontier news this week it was announced on the forums that the planned community goal for this week had been held up due to a technical issue. It was thought that the CG was going to feature samples collected from Thargoids ...more on that in just a moment and it was stated on the latest Elite Dangerous livestream on Thursday evening that any Thargoid material collected outside of the CG being active will not be valid for the CG's purposes so there's no value in attempting to preload yourself with goopy goid entrails. 
In last weeks show I made a mention of the plan to offer pre-engineered heatsinks for purchase on board the megaships that had recently been deployed to the coal sack and witch head sectors but at the time of transmission those heatsinks were not yet available. It appears that the arrival of the heatsinks was altogether premature and that they were a recent community goal reward and so to give those rewarded commanders some continued exclusivity and value from their rewards their sale from those megaships is being put on hold for the moment. They will go on sale just not yet. As soon as we hear any more on that we will of course let you know on this very channel. Away from that there was no other development news on the livestream this week. Again if and when that changes we'll of course drop it here. In what was an event almost certainly timed to coincide with the now delayed community goal planned for this week everyone's favourite savage salad fearing wannabe messiah in the making the ever mysterious salvation made moves to further embed himself with the galaxy's trinity of superpowers this week. Galnet has reported that regulatory changes within the big three have allowed what it's calling quote increasing numbers of crew members unquote from their own armed forces to be seconded to serve aboard vessels owned by Taurus Mining Ventures the largely unknown private company that is aligned with whatever the hell old salad nation is actually up to. So just to complete your notes here so we're all on the same page large quantities of our own defensive forces now aboard Salivations controlled megaships instead of being aboard our own perfectly serviceable megaships instead assisting this utterly unknown secretive individual who has proven time and time again that his primary skill lies in whipping the Pleiades dwelling turnips of toxicity into an absolute furor of murder and carnage and not actually holding them back or wiping them out at all. Navy personnel on vulnerable civilian owned ships, largely unstoppable enemy whipped up into a corrosive frenzy. With me so far? As if to underline the proximity of our civilizations position in relation to the looming apocalypse the nebula loving weeds of woe this week decided to once again prove that our significant distance from their original traditional stomping grounds in the Pleiades region really isn't an issue should they decide to visit Sol when using up their time in their annual leave allowance. With the Thargs day tick this week the multi limbed horticultural horrors popped up in the systems Novas, DDO and So Song. If you're unfamiliar with those systems then indulge me one moment whilst I place those systems into some clearer perspective for you. Novas is 130 light years from Sol, DDO is 105 light years from Sol and brace yourself folks this is great Sosong is just 76 light years from Sol. In galactic terms Sosong is riddled with laser spewing marigolds of murder and is closer to the cradle of humanity than the corner shop you always run to when you've run out of milk. That distant rumbling you can hear is the massed ranks of the galaxy's anti xeno forces sprinting towards their ships. All Salvation has ever done is drive the Thargoids towards a killing spree. Large portions of our armed forces are now out of our control on board ships instead controlled by Salvation. The Thargoids are a quite literal jump away from Sol and spoiling for a rumble. Assuming there's a galaxy left next week then we will of course continue to report on how all this plays out but before we go let me leave you with this thought. Historically as far as Elite Dangerous is concerned the Thargoids have of course been close to Earth before. In fact we made a video about their previous terror inducing flyby which is linked on screen now. Their current excursion into our backyard however is very different. It's being driven by a deliberate frontier constructed and deployed plotline that has been running for 18 months now ever since Halloween of 2020 when the Adamaster megaship arrived in the Chukchan system and we learnt about the dubious dealings of Azimuth biochemicals and their brush with the newly discovered aliens 200 years prior. We know from Frontier's own announcements that the Azimuth storyline is coming to an end this year. What we're seeing now certainly very much feels like the prelude to a story's crescendo moment. If that is indeed the case then what shape that crescendo takes is obviously an unknown. Your guess is as good as mine. 
What motivation actually drives the Thargoids has always been an enigma but now I'd argue that that enigmatic purpose is itself being driven by Salvation's own enigmatic purpose. Whatever or whomever Salvation is they clearly have an agenda beyond saving humanity from a threat. Are they in fact creating and driving that threat to a place where they can elevate themselves to the position of saviour or are they simply stirring a conflict, removing our armed forces and instead selling us guns to fund their own retirement plans? Or is there perhaps something else deeper in their machinations that we simply cannot currently decipher? Whatever happens next it feels like it could be set to change the shape and nature of the galaxy forever but of course only Frontier really know the answer to that. Will you be brushing up on your AX combat tactics this week in an effort to defend Sol? What did you think of the art station concept work and did you find anything interesting yourself that we perhaps missed? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then 07 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.